And on the line with us is uh, is Peter Glick. Peter has a an amazing new book out. Uh, he's a senior fellow, by the way, he's the senior fellow, co-founder and president emeritus of the Pacific Institute, a world-renowned expert, uh, innovator, and communicator on water and climate issues, the author of multiple books, including his brand new one, The Three Ages of Water, Prehistoric Past, Imperiled Present, and Hope for the Future. Uh, Dr. Peter Glick, welcome to the program. Uh, thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. Thanks, thanks for joining us. You know, given uh, the Supreme Court just this week, or just last week, I guess, uh, uh, gutting federal protection for half the wetlands in America, what is the state of the waters of the world and of the United States? Well, yes, that was a terrible decision. It was a bad decision on the science grounds. It was a bad decision on legal grounds. It was a bad decision on moral and ethical grounds. And it certainly is not going to contribute to the improvement of water quality and ecosystem quality in the United States. Uh, but the nature of water worldwide is, is a challenge. We have a global water crisis in a lot of different dimensions, from the failure to provide safe water and sanitation to everyone on the planet, even though we could, to the eco ecosystem problems associated with our water use, to violent conflicts associated with water, to now the threat of global climate change. All of those are in a sense, what I would describe as the, the global challenges we face around fresh water. And, and uh, I, I noticed that, uh, I, I believe it was a week before last, uh, parts of Phoenix, Arizona have announced a, a moratorium on, on uh, new construction because of a concern yeah. about water. And mm -hmm. uh, maybe it was six months ago or so, there was a, a couple of news stories about how the federal government is inserting itself into or has been asked to come into the, the dispute among several of the Western states about how the Colorado River's water is being used. Right. Um, what's, I, I mean, are we looking at a time here in the United States where within our lifetime we have to start abandoning cities? Well, so the Colorado River is a great example of the sort of nature of the crisis that faces us. It's not a very big river. It's the major river that feeds the Southwestern part of the United States. It's extraordinarily vulnerable to droughts and floods and has been in drought for almost two decades now, drought in the sense that we're getting less and less water delivered by nature. And it's a challenge for economics of the Southwest. Uh, the action by Phoenix to limit development around Phoenix, new development around Phoenix is actually sort of a remarkable thing. You know, We've always in the past assumed we could grow as much as we want wherever we wanted, and somehow we would find the water uh, that's no longer the case in the southwestern part, though. The Colorado River is tapped out. And so the fact that now at least we're beginning to think about integrating the way we think about demand and we think about new developments with challenges associated with water, you know, that that's a bad thing in the sense of development, but it's a good thing in the sense that it's time maybe we're coming to our to our senses. I don't think we'll be abandoning the cities in the southwest, but we're going to have to be changing the way we deal with water resources and we're going to have to challenge this idea of unlimited growth. How specifically are, uh, you know, what's your, your sense of the best, best practices for changing water practices? Um, and, and what's actually being adopted? What's, what, you know, what are people looking at? What are governments looking at? Well, so as I describe in the book, um, you know, the third age of water, the sort of back third of the book, mm -hmm is a positive sense that we can solve our water problems. And it's based on, you know, partly my long experience with dealing with water issues, but also the news that there are sustainable, smart, successful strategies that are being adopted around the world. You know, we're learning that we don't have to take more and more water out of our ecosystems, and we can in fact restore our ecosystems, that we can be more efficient with the water we're using. We can grow more food with less water. We can make more semiconductors than the things that we want with more efficient industrial processes. Uh, that we can find new sources of water that don't require draining our rivers. But for example, taking the very high quality wastewater that we collect and treat, but now typically throw away, and we could reuse that water. Or ultimately, we could desalinate ocean water. That's very expensive and it's got economic and ecological challenges. But it's an option for the future, uh, that we can uh, think about integrating the economic value of water with the human right to water and meet basic human needs for water around the world. I do see success strategies. I do see things that are working that we just have to integrate, we have to scale up, and we have to apply more widely. 
that's the positive vision of the future that I, I, I see is out there. There's, uh, I, there are a couple of organizations that have been devoted to uh, establishing rights under the Constitution for nature. Um, and I, 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 there's at least one country in South America that's actually put these into law, and there have been a couple of court cases. So far as far as I know, all of them have, have been lost. Um, but, uh, you know, there are, there are groups that are persisting in, in uh, trying to... Well, actually, I think Lake Erie, uh, wasn't it, that uh, a court found that the lake had a right to exist or something like that? What, what is the state of the rights of nature in the context of water? Yeah, that's interesting. You know, in, in, in the, over the past century, the way we thought about water was that water was a resource to be consumed. It was a resource that could be extracted for human use. And we didn't care about or we didn't know about or a combination of the two, the ecological consequences of that. Uh, and the ecological consequences of our water crisis now are, are, are pretty dramatic. But in the last few years, there has been a growing realization that we can support and sustain our ecosystems and that it's important to do so. You know, we passed the Clean Water Act in the United States and the Safe Drinking Water Act many, many years ago, decades ago. And that has helped us clean up Lake Erie. It's helped us clean up the Cuyahoga River, which caught fire in 1968 and helped stimulate the environmental movement in the U.S. Uh, in 2010, the United Nations declared a human right to water. And we're now thinking about how to implement the human right to water. Water is not just an economic good, but it's also a human right. The state of California passed legislation acknowledging the human right to water. And we haven't quite figured out how to implement it yet and what it really means. But what it really means to me is that we ought to provide safe water and sanitation to everyone on the planet, independent of their ability to pay for it. You know, we pay for water when we can, uh, but if there's an inability because of poverty, because of inequities to pay for water, we still have a right to deliver safe water to everyone on the planet. And those are steps forward for this more sustainable future. Provide water for ecosystems, provide water for everyone on the planet, and figure out how to allocate the rest in a fair and equitable way. Yeah, it's, it's a remarkable topic, a, a great book. And uh, Dr. Peter Glick is the author of The Three Ages of Water, Prehistoric Past, Imperiled Present, and Hope, and A Hope for the Future. Dr. Glick, thanks so much for dropping by. It's great talking with you. Yeah, thanks for having me on, and, and thanks for thinking about water as an important issue to be addressed. My pleasure, as I drink my water here. <laughs> it okay. is important. Thank you, sir.